kind of time to start adding a little mix bus compression. Shadow Hills Mastering Compressor has been really floating my boat, so to speak, lately. It's been a lot of fun. It takes a little bit to figure out, though, I will say that. There's two parts to the compressor. There's the discrete part, and then there's the optical part. I usually take the optical part out of the chain. And then this meter select here is defaults on the optical, and since I've taken the optical out of the chain, I switch it over to the discrete side. And so now both left and right meters just show my gain reduction. So anything I do on the left-hand side affects both channels. As you can see by the knob in the middle, it says dual model to the left and stereo to the right. It can be your benefit to, to play around with both ways of working on the stereo bus, whether you're in dual mono mode or stereo mode. Just when you're doing that in dual mono mode, you just have to make sure that you're matching your settings properly. But for today, I'm just gonna stick with stereo mode. So here I have the ratio. I'm just gonna go to one to five. And I usually like my attack to be a little on the fast side and my release to be a little slower. So I'm gonna play it and slowly turn up my threshold until I get some meters dancing. That's feeling pretty good to me. The bus is getting squeezed together, letting me more, a little more control going on. I'm kind of wondering if it's a little bit too slow on the attack, so I'm gonna play with the attack and release while the track's playing. When I was listening to the track back, I was playing with the attack time on the compressor, and I felt like it needed to be faster. The track itself is a moderate tempo track, but it comes into play with that live situation of the, the band in a kind of tubby room playing together, where I was looking for more of a transient. I wanted the compressor to grab the transients quicker, and that makes it feel tighter to me and also a little bit more exciting to me in that instance. But at the same token, I left the release at the same way. And right now it's feeling really good. It's starting to gel really well together. Now I'm just checking my headroom. So when the compressor is compressing, I'm losing gain. And there's no auto makeup gain on this particular plugin. So I have to make up the gain. And I usually want to play it for a little bit to see how loud I can get my dynamic range within my print track before going over. So that's eight, so I'm just gonna crank it up to nine, see how hard I can go without peaking. That looks really good. I'm gonna start from there. So let me play a couple bars with and a couple bars without. Let me just start without first. Here we go. So in the name of the game in this, it's the compressor's doing really what I wanted to do. I'm really hearing uh, a lot of squeezing going on. It's taking a lot of the transients and things that are sort of flapping around in the stereo image and really bringing them together in a tight, tight way. So it's making the speakers react in a really good way. And it, that, that in turn creates excitement in your mix. Big thing about, especially with this track, since it's a live thing, all the 
parts in there are sort of weaving in and out of each other in a frequency in a great way. And I've made them big sounding, and now I'm using a little bit of stereo bus compression to sort of tame them down a little bit, but it's working in a way to where the whole track's becoming tighter, more responsive and exciting to my ear. And that's what I want for the listener. I want it to be like, I want it to jump out of their speakers. And this is helping the cause. 